What's going on, everybody? Welcome to our FN Studios. I'm John Ramdeen. He is Robin Black. We were in Montreal this past Friday for TKO 37. If you were here in Canada, you got to see it live on Fight Network. If you are around the world, you got a chance to watch it live on UFC Fight Pass, uh, the main event. What a bizarre weekend. We saw what happened with BJ Penn, Yar Rodriguez. We saw an Ezekiel choke uh, from a fighter with his back against the canvas. Mounted. Uh, mounted. Uh, and then Stranya Gavrilovic getting the job done in the main event, knocking out Joe Valet at TKO 37. However, there was some confusion. If you watch the broadcast, I'm freaking out because the referee came in and grabbed Stranya, and I'm freaking out because he continued to hit yeah, Valet. Yeah. However, we hung out with a couple of friends of ours, former TKO champion, as well as UFC Cutman and trainer of uh, tons of mixed martial arts fighters, and they pointed out it is the referee's responsibility to be in the fighter's um, sight lines. Yeah. That a poke in the back uh, with a fighter that is full of rage and fury and is doing his thing can't feel a little poke or two and that the, the referee's job is to really get in there. Yeah, you know, there's different perspectives and some of them are colored by emotion and the moment, definitely at the time. So if you haven't seen it, John did a great job of describing hammer fists while I'm being pulled away by the ref and, I, and I'm seemingly trying to squeeze some extra ones in. At the time, we were like, you know, they could disqualify him and once they did, I was like, I'm happy that the commission did that, it was right. You know, it's never as easy as we think. Yeah. It's never, they, they, you must have an open mind that maybe your perspective, it can change if with given new information. And I think that's a really important thing. It helps us understand things on a different level. But their perspective, yes, was that referee must be here reaching in, getting in front. But at the same time, you gotta be in control. You must be in control. Mm -hmm. Was he, did he lose control? Was he motivated by trying to hurt an unconscious man? We don't know that, but you must be in control of yourself. You must be in control of your weapons. You have to be, you know, th saying that, well, some of these guys become blind with, with chaos. Is that not true? It can be true, but it is their responsibility to control that. This man, who we are a fan of, Stranya Gavrilovic, great fighter, ferocious fighter, entertaining fighter, you know, uh, he, he's, he's a very exciting, fun, vital fighter to watch and, and a really fun guy. Um, he just got one of the best wins of his career. Mm -hmm. He had a two, he was on a two fight losing streak, closed the distance with an overhand right and KO'd that man. And if he's in control of himself and his weapons, he has now won a fight. Instead, he lost the fight by, by uh, DQ, whether that ref should have been in position or not, he cannot be doing that. And they were talking about giving him yeah. a bonus for knockout. Yeah, and then, and he would have got a bonus, that's right. And then after finding that out, still wasn't in control and started fighting almost with some of the commission members. You must be in control of yourself. I feel bad for him because, uh, you know, if you take those other perspectives into account, my friend Nick Denis, if you look, it's on YouTube, he knocked out Nick Mamalis with a slam. Yeah. It was brilliant. And then he's hitting him. And he said, for whatever reason in his mind, he didn't go overboard, but his way to explain how he experienced that was that his mind was like, I better keep hitting him in case he wakes up. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. your, your mind isn't, you're not sitting there analytically deciding, maybe I'll move my head here. This is all happening. So uh, I definitely have a more open mind towards it, thanks. It was Adrian Woolley, former yeah. TKO champ, and Alin Halmajan, who is uh, uh, the best cut man and uh, a great, great Muay Thai coach and a great man. And they offered that perspective. And when you put it in and you keep an open mind, you're like, yes, he did go overboard. But the ref is there not only to save you from damage, but maybe to protect you from yourself. And the ref let him down. Uh, TJ Laramie, one of Canada's top prospects, got the job Another done. Weird one. And, and again, at the time, we thought that he landed an illegal knee. And as a matter of fact, you were talking about Adrian Woolley. One of the commission members said that was an illegal yeah. knee. But because of the amendment to the unified rules, Apparently that knee was that knee was completely no, it, legal. No, it, it was not it was legal. Not legal. No, uh, if you put one hand on the mat, yeah. you remember how and guy you're a downed opponent, but then a guy would go to knee you and put one hand down. That's still you're not grounded. When I see you just do this, I can knee you all I want. That's the real amendment. Otherwise, with, if I'm in your guard, you'd be able to kick me in the face. <laughs> you know, yeah. otherwise we can stomp a guy on the ground. His body is the, so the only thing they amended was that. But regardless of that, so TJ was winning the fight against a very talented young Maxim fighter. Dubois, Maxim Dubois, good job. Dubois, yeah, awesome. And Maxim approached that fight with the understanding that the first half of that fight would be hell. 
and that if he was going to have a chance to win, he would be able to manage that hell. And he did. He did a great job of it. And he should have had the chance to carry on. But at the same time, and you hope they get a rematch, because that's the answer yeah, we, yeah. we need. Uh, TJ lost a fight that he did not lose. Two idiots, and I, I, I shouldn't be that rude, two guys who are judges <laughs> for whatever reason. In Michigan. They, yeah, uh, in Michigan. May have had something in their eye, or you know, they, they were drunk, or you know, something <laughs> happened. And they did not give him the, the win. He and won that fight. He won that he won fight. fight. And his coach, Reno, and people around him were all protesting. And to me, I was just like, accept it. This is part of the game. In five, ten years, when you're 22 and four, these things won't matter. And it's the same thing to Maxime Dubois. TJ didn't do that on purpose. It happened within the fight. People were unsure of the rules. And one guy got the win and one guy got the loss in a beautiful fight. You accept it and you fight them again. And then you both get paid again. You yeah. both learn something about it. You, protests almost never work in fighting. In fact, in the Quebec Commission, they almost don't even have a protocol to do it. So regardless of who did, it was that legal, was that illegal, it was a wonderful fight that TJ was winning, but Maxime was ac accomplishing his goals of staying in there and keeping himself in a position to win just like they planned. But it goes this way, accept it, fight again, get paid again, and let's see it. Uh, TJ Laramie's little brother, Tony Laramie, Jeremy, uh, another one of Canada's top prospects, made his professional mixed martial arts debut a week after turning 18 years of age. And he took on Kevin Lee's uh, little brother, Kevin Lee, yes. UFC lightweight, who was also making his professional mixed martial arts debut. You have to go and see this fight. When I watch this fight, the next day, as we're taking yeah. the train back from Montreal to Toronto, I, I let it marinate. And I thought to myself, this is the new era. These guys who don't have any professional in cage experience are going out there and fighting like seasoned veterans yeah. and I had a feeling that BJ Penn was in trouble because of that <laughs> yeah. and then on the undercard not the undercard the uh, I guess the undercard I saw Sergio Pettis do what he did against John Moraga and it really kind of cemented the fact that it is the changing of the guard oh, yeah. but these two kids if, if it's any indication of what the future the future holds for mixed martial arts it's terrifying yeah so there's those two kids Derek Falk also yep, fought on there there was a young guy James Clark yep. from his gym that was really good and a shout out to him uh, there's a lot of them and here's the thing unfortunately the biggest obstacle all of these guys have is some of them some of their coaches some of their coaches that come in and train with them some of the places they go people say oh my god you've never seen anything like this you don't understand how good he is you must understand, they are part of a global phenomenon. So this, and the guys out of Vegas, nobody could believe Keith lost that fight because yeah. they're like, no, he's so good, you don't understand. Oh my God, Tony's so good, you don't understand. There's 10 of them. There's 12 of them. There's two in Brazil. There's one in Japan. There's a guy in England. Is there even more than that? There's more than that. There's 30 of them. There's 50 of them. What's happening in mix? And even still, right now, Reno Belcastro, Tony's uh, coach going, Robin, you don't get it. I get it, Reno. <laughs> but there are we lots love you, of them. We love you, man. We love you. And you are the right coach for this young man. But there are lots of this level. And they must continue to grow. All we have with brilliant 18-year-olds like Tony and Keith and Derek Falk, we have the starting point because it is gonna be the one who evolves to some insane level at 27 or 28 years old that's gonna change fighting forever. Tony got a brilliant win as he adapted in real time to a guy with a six inch reach advantage who trains in Las Vegas with such high level UFC guys and beat some of them in the gym just like Tony did. That's brilliant, they're 18 freaking years old. But he must get 200% better over the next seven years through work, learning, building on building on building on building on knowledge. And w if and when he does, uh, Keith does, Derek Falk does, and the other 15 out there, we're gonna find out in 2020. We're gonna see things we've never seen and never thought we would see. It was a tremendous weekend of mixed martial arts action. TKO 38 goes down Friday, April 7th.